Welcome, I am Anae and I've read a total of eight books in the month of January and I want to go ahead and run through them with you guys. Before I start, I have to complain about the book community right now because I keep on seeing the same exact books all the time. So when I'm trying to start a new book, I always end up reading something that everyone else has read before and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to find something undiscovered. So starting out the month of January, I read that's the back cover. I read Less by Andrew Sean Greer or Greer. Greer. My dyslexia is telling me that it's greener. But I read this book here and if you want to know what it feels like to turn 50, this is the book that you should read. This book kind of gave me the vibes of if you ever read A Little Life. It kind of had the same energy of the main character in that book, not in the horrible way that that book is structured and how traumatizing it is but in the way that the guy in this book his name's author he happens to be an author and he comes to this epiphany where he takes all these letters that he's gotten over the year and he decides to go out and travel the world before his 50th birthday and in this time he turns 50 there's a love story in here and it's just a very powerful movement about what it's like to move into being 50 and having everyone seem so successful beyond you and you're just standing in life feeling like you're not doing enough. He has imposter syndrome throughout this whole book, but I just absolutely love the imposter syndrome that he's feeling throughout the book because the actual author of the book, Andrew, goes ahead and in his writing, you have the character he's very much imposter syndrome but you'll find out that everyone actually praises him and he just doesn't know about it so he just constantly feels like he's an imposter even though he's actually doing things that people really appreciate which is just iconic one quote that i will poke to go ahead and convince you to read this book is on page 42 if you get this version he has been all those things to all those people who did not know who he was People are not gonna like me when I say this, but I tried reading everything I know about love, but I did not finish it. During this time that I was reading this book, I was also listening to Julia Fox's audiobook. So it was one of those situations to where the time in which I was reading it was not the best time because of the other books I was reading it. If you don't know what everything, uh, everything I know about love by Dolly Altern, it's a, renowned book everyone loves it it's a memoir it's about her life but reading it going into it I did not know that it was memoir and it very much reads like one when you do get to read it she's a very unlikable character the setting is in the early 2000s I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I picked this book up but the setting is in the early 2000s it's very crazy and it seems highly unrealistic it makes you feel like you're not doing enough in your life like you're not partying enough and taking enough drugs and i just didn't want that vibe so i threw this one to the curb next we have breakfast at tiffany's i really didn't like this book i wanted to read it because i knew that the book existed and it was an hour long i listened to it on audiobook and it was really nice it was a nice story to listen to it's kind of great gaspy vibes to where you have this outsider character looking into this elaborate life of this woman and revealing all her secrets as it comes along and like finding things out about her and being like, oh, well, no, that can't be true. Like, I've been around her. There's no possible way. What do you mean she's... What do you mean? What? It kind of had like that very air and vibe. I rated it three stars. I really just didn't feel the vibes Remember when i said that i was reading down the drain by julia fox this book had me on my toes i listened to it on audiobook but oh my god when i tell you she's such an unlikable character she's beyond unlikable if you don't know who julia fox is if you've ever seen uncut gems she is one of the characters that's in it and she tells her story about a lot of drugs so many drugs and there's this constant dilemma to where she says that she's done with men and then falls in love with the next man that pops up in her life. I don't know if that's just the way she's written it, but that's 
seems to be the vibes of what's happening i rated it a three stars and it would continue to stay at three stars it was a just a story with a lot of plot twists and a lot of shocking moments that kind of drew away from the actual story but otherwise the storyline was like great i mean it was her life how can you fuck up your own storyline but yeah not a book that i strongly enjoy which is unfortunate because i had such high expectations for this book i have been in my smut era but my smut fantasy era though that's the thing you might think i want to say a court in thrones or roses but no 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 it is a touch of darkness the hades persephone saga beautiful beautiful four stars four stars loved it reminded me of um lore olympus if you've ever seen lore olympus here it is i was absolutely encaptured reading this first book i listened to it on audiobook i was taking away i started reading the second book and i'm reading it now and it was absolutely wonderful like i said it's kind of like the lore olympus vibe so you have persephone she's in college and hades is this he's one of the divine as we know he's super rich and he pulls these deals playing poker with mortals for their souls versus what they want and he ends up pulling a deal with persephone and one of the deals is that she has to grow something in the underworld and if she doesn't then he gets to take her it is absolutely crazy how the story goes and you go into it already knowing that she's gonna fall in love with him and he's gonna fall in love with her but the way the story structure just makes you think of hades in a different light and how He's very much a hated god when it comes to the Olympus lore, but he's so sincere. And that is just what I want from a book. And that is exactly what I got and I loved it. And such a kiss. You know, when you have high expectations for a book and they just come out being so, so low. When the coffee gets cold did that to me. I was so excited to read this book i had it on my tbr for the longest time ever and when i finally got to read it i was so disappointed the storyline is so predictable and when you find out how going back in time works it just makes it so much worse it makes it so much worse if you don't know what this book is about it's about this cafe there's a magical chair in the cafe that allows you to go back in the past, but there are rules that are associated with it. One of those rules being that when you go back, you won't be able to change anything in the future and you must return before the coffee gets cold. So we have a storyline of every character in this book has an opportunity, has a position to where they need to sit in this chair they want to. And we hear the storyline of each one sitting in a chair, but when I tell you they are so frustrating, they are so frustrating. Like, you're in the chair. Why are you wasting time? Why are you sitting there just like in shock, not saying anything when you know that you don't have that much time? It just gave me the vibes of Dora the Explorer when she's like, can you tell me where he is? Swipe or no swiping. But they need to save someone from falling in a volcano and it takes them 30 minutes to get there. Two stars. Just two. It was a great read. It's a great book if you need to get back into reading and you just need like chill vibes. I literally, my rant was so long because I had so much beef with this book. When I'm reading during the month, I like to have a different variety, a different mix of books that I'm reading. I'm very much a mood reader. So one of the audiobooks I listened to was this one. And I felt okay about it. I didn't really grasp anything about it. I mean, the title as is implied. It's a productivity book. Some of the things that were said just seemed something like I already knew before. So if you're going into your journey of being productive and you don't really know where to start, then I would say that this book is one of those places that you should go to. But for me particularly, I was already kind of past those points of when it came to being productive in my life. So I gave that book three stars, very average, something easy to read, 
something easy to listen to but not really my cup of tea probably the best book that i read so far in the month of january and for this year has been the fury by alex i cannot pronounce that last name i have dyslexia so i will not but it was the fury um it was the book of the month for january loved it adored it will continue to adore this book and hold it precious on my shelf we have a movie star named lana which was just lana del rey you couldn't even tell me what her last name was that's who i was thinking about you have a movie star named lana and she wants to get out of london because it's gloomy and she doesn't like it anymore so she decides to take her son and a whole bunch of her friends and go to an island on Greece where someone eventually ends up dying, but we don't know who's dead or we don't know who has done the murdering. So the book takes you with an unreliable narrator reading through how we got to where we are. When I tell you five stars, five stars across the board, this book had me taking notes in the margin continuously. I was ripping it down trying to figure out who did what, why, who had a motivation to kill someone, who was going to be dead. Some of the things I kind of read through the lines and I was like, wow, I already know what was going on right there. Easy, easy money. You know, you think that a mystery is going to be predictable and then you get shook. You get shook and you love every bit of it. And that's exactly what this book was like. With the rise of Saltburn, there has been a rise in dark academia books. I'm a victim. I read this book. The Secret History by Donna Tartt. Oh, a classic. A classic. Yes, indeed. Three stars. <laughs> Three stars. If you already don't know what the circuit history is about, you have the narrator, who is Richard. He goes ahead and he starts studying at this college called Hampton, where he gets entwined with this group of Greek people. He gets super entwined into their friend group, and they do some shit, and he gets involved in it, unironically. And it is a whirlwind. I got to a point in the book where I was just stuck. I was like, what else could happen? It was so passive and nothing was really moving. I kind of felt stuck, but I continued to read it. You know, I loved it in the beginning. I was just trying to figure out like, who killed him? Who killed him? And then it became obvious of who done it. And it kind of just went on for a little while, but I just you just feel so bad for the character Richard in the end and his experience with these people it was very much a passive read and it's just a chill vibe read with just a little bit of shock in it so yeah I couldn't really like I don't I wouldn't put myself through this again so definitely three stars so this is the bundle that we have for the month of January. It's very blue. I love it. I love it. If you want to go ahead and see what I read for the month of February, please, please go ahead and subscribe. I will not be reading not one pink book, not one love story. I renounce it. I will not be doing that. We have a glorious spread here. We have some fantasy, memoir, contemporary mystery thriller we had a good mix this month this was great i'm excited to see what i'll read next month